Welcome to Japan Issues. Don't make it an easy, second defense budget. We would like to share the commentary in the Sankey Shimbun, December 2, 2022, by Mr. Masahiko Hosokawa. Professor at the Maisei University, and former Japanese bureaucrat in the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. On November 28, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida instructed his relevant ministers to increase defense-related expenditures to 2% of gross domestic product, GDP, by fiscal 2027. This defense-related expenditures includes not only defense expenditures but also the budgets of other ministries that may contribute to defense, such as public infrastructure development expenditures and the research and development expenditures. On November 22, a report was submitted by a panel of experts on how to strengthen defense capabilities. It became clear that this report was a tool for the creation of the flow of the Prime Minister's instructions. The report includes the possession of a counterattack capability in the event of an armed attack on Japan, as well as the strengthening of the continuous war fighting capability, including the securing of ammunition, and this point has been evaluated by some. However, this is not the true purpose of the experts' meeting. It was already clear from the materials submitted at the meeting and from the lineup of the members of the expert panel, that it was a report by the Ministry of Finance, for the Ministry of Finance. One is the issue of financial resources for defense. The first is the issue of securing financial resources, including tax increases. Before the year-end budget compilation and tax system revision for the next fiscal year, in order to check a move within the ruling party to use government bonds. The second is to compile the budget contributing to strengthening comprehensive national defense system in the budgets of ministries other than the Ministry of Defense. This is the so-called second defense budget, and it is designed sum up to 2% of the GDP, totaling defense-related budgets of the other ministries. The targets are the huge budgets of the infrastructure development of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism and of those of the Research and Development of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. The government says it will set up special quotas for these. But they will simply be color-coded from the existing budget, not added on top of it. Increasing the color coding within the existing budget would naturally reduce the financial burden of defense-related expenses. The government should naturally move forward with comprehensive efforts to strengthen defense capabilities by eliminating the negative effects of vertically segmented administration by individual ministries and agencies. No one would disagree with that. The problem is that if this becomes a tokenistic collaboration, and a means of matching numbers, it will not truly strengthen defense capabilities. A particular problem is the research and development mechanism. A cross-ministry system should be established to match the needs of the Ministry of Defense with the seeds technologies of each ministry. A target amount is then set in advance and allocated to defense-related expenses. At first glance, this system looks good, but it has a major pitfall. One of the most important issues in defense research and development is the long-standing policy of the Science Council of Japan that it will not be involved in military research. This remains a major constraint in the field of research. The Ministry of Defense itself has created a new system to strengthen research and development but it has failed to produce sufficient results due to lack of cooperation from researchers. A mechanism to overcome this situation is the public-private technical cooperation under the Economic Security Promotion Act enacted this year. This new mechanism was created under the leadership of the Cabinet Office, eliminating the vertically segmented bureaucracy of ministries. A think tank will survey the needs of the security field and the Ministry of Defense and other security agencies will be involved in the public-private council from the project formulation stage. Furthermore, 
since the needs of the defense establishment cannot be expressed if there is a risk of information leakage. Researchers participating in the project are obliged to maintain confidentiality under penalties. The project is to be carried out under this elaborate institutional design, and a fund of 500 billion yen is to be established. It is extremely doubtful that the expert panel took this background into consideration. Naively, matching, seeds with needs may end up with the ministries merely dressing up as business associates. Only when the Ministry of Defense is involved in the project from the project's inception stage will the results lead to implementation in the defense field. Also, will it be possible to demonstrate meaningful defense needs to the research and development of each ministry, where researchers are not obliged to maintain confidentiality? If it proposes a system that may be empty in order to pad the second defense budget, it would be a complete disaster. The main issue is the expansion of public-private technical cooperation. The report also contains serious flaws with regard to the defense industry. As more and more companies are pulling out of the defense industry, there is an urgent need to foster and strengthen it. The question is what should be done to achieve this. There are two major problems. One is that the rigid equipment procurement system has forced companies to withdraw from the industry due to low profit margins. The other is the inability to develop new customers because the Ministry of Defense is the only buyer. The report states that the latter will be addressed by removing restrictions on the transfer of defense equipment overseas and establishing a system of government-led overseas sales. While this in itself is commendable, what is essential is that the procurement system be improved so that the defense industry can break away from low profit margins and have a better outlook for the future. However, the report makes no mention of this, and thus lacks the finishing touch. It is believed that the Ministry of Finance does not want to touch on the improvement of the procurement system because it would increase the fiscal burden. Although the members of the expert panel may have a broad perspective, to what extent can we expect them to delve deeper into these topics? The government plans to reflect the report's recommendations in three security-related documents to be revised by the end of the year, including a document on national security. It is hoped that the three security-related documents will be a national policy that takes into account the concerns of the report. That's all, from the commentary by Mr. Masahiko Hosokawa, professor at the Maisei University, and former Japanese bureaucrat in the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry.